Hey skiers, it's Bob with SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Matt. Welcome to Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News. Matt, thanks for filling in for Jeff, who's off today. My nothing pleasure. crazy, no jury duty, no nothing <laughs> like that. Just taking care of some stuff. So uh, nice to have Matt back in here. And we were also in here together the other day uh, doing this Black Crow's Corvus review for 2025. Totally new ski. Uh, so make sure you check that out. And then earlier in the week, uh, Jeff and I were in here talking about this new uh, Mantra M7, uh, which was a lot of fun. That was kind of a long time coming, and a lot of people were uh, really interested in this latest iteration, iteration of, the, uh, of the Mantra here. People get very excited about their yep. Mantras. Yep. Yeah. So if you haven't checked out those two ski review videos, make sure to do that. Uh, and then in other news, we are having our warehouse sale here in this building next weekend. So that's July 20th and 21st. This is our second annual warehouse sale where we open up the doors to the public and just have uh, really, really good deals. Uh, the whole idea here, Matt, is that we're passing the savings from shipping, processing, calling you on the phone, like all of those things are passed along to the customer. Yep. So we're seeing some really good deals on all sorts of stuff. We're really kind of moving a whole lot of inventory around. So from our brick and mortar shops, Basin and Killington and Pinnacle Ski and Sports here in Stowe, uh, as well as just lots of other stuff from the warehouse and our little storage areas. This is like the, this is the time to get stuff. Yep, we had a really fun time walking around trying to find the best deals earlier. Yep. There's some, some really good ones. Really, um, really good ones. Yeah, my most notable one was a Revolt 96 for $225. Yep. So Reliance 82 Ti for 299. Yep. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So these are all in in warehouse prices only, only in person, only in store. Um, so if you're in the area, definitely make sure to come check it out. If you're not in the area and are looking for an excuse to come up to Stowe for the weekend, uh, you can actually get some discounts on lodging. The best way to do that is to go to our event page on Facebook. I think is kind of the the, the best way to do it. Yep. Um, and then there's a link to Go Stow, uh, which has uh, our certain partners that we have for uh, lodging discounts. So, uh, I mean, I'm unsure as to the availability at this point, but certainly worth a look and just kind of another way that we're trying to get people from a little bit farther to come check out kind of what we're doing here in the warehouse. So that's kind of the big news here, uh, here in Stowe. Um, hope to see you all here next weekend. Be pretty fun. Um, I think that's it for housekeeping stuff. Um, we can get into the news, I believe, Matt. Yep. Um, two weeks ago when you were here, we talked about, uh, what was that place in Montana for sale? Beartooth Basin? Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So Beartooth Basin was for sale, and I talked about my lifelong dream to own a ski area. Uh, we got another one coming on the market. This one's a little bit closer to home albeit probably less realistic for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, Burke Mountain is finally being sold off. Um, if you are all unaware, Jay Peak and Burke were owned by Ariel Kuros and Bill Stenger, who were uh, caught in this EB-5 scandal, basically taking money for, from foreign investors uh, to put into the mountain for uh, in exchange for uh, green cards, basically, I think is how it went. So, okay. um, and then there was a whole defrauding case with that, and basically Burke and Jay ended up being uh, sold off to the bank to repay the investors who were defrauded. Uh, anyway, Jay got sold by the bank in 2022 to Pacific Group Resorts for 76 million dollars. And now they, that same banking group is expecting Burke to sell by year's end. Um, they do have kind of an, in, an initial bid going in, and then they're going to kind of work up from there. Uh, it is interesting to note that last time that Vale and Altera were both bidders on J, but neither of them, neither of them won out. Interesting. Um, I would imagine Burke will go for less than $76 million, or at least, I don't know if, Inflation has really caught up that much in two years, but it's less um, of, I would say, a resort than Jay. Right. Um, 
So I don't know. Maybe I'll put my name in there. And why not? I mean, yeah, it could because of the academy. There's like, yeah, there's, there's a pull some, there. There's some pull <clears throat> for that, but yeah, it's not like the the glitz and glam that J Peak is in in a resort. Yeah, situation. Yeah. There's no water park. No, park. no water park. Nope. Don't they have a movie theater at Jay too in the in the parking lot? They do. I yeah. I don't know. I've never been there. I kind of got the idea that it was like a big screen set up in a conference room, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. There's stuff. There's there's stuff there. And Burke, they got the new hotel, so there's interesting things. And then they have the biking in the summer, which yeah, the bike isn't park is like, awesome. Is that that's Burke? That's run through Burke Mountain. Mm, yeah. Okay. So yep. there's mountain biking there. There's amenities. It's not just. It's not just a little ski mountain. No, it's There's just a little there. bit far yeah. from... But, but it's like close to 91. Like you can take the highway pretty much right up right. from point south, which yeah. I think is interesting. But uh, I guess we'll see how that plays out. Um, have you ever skied at Burke? No, only mountain bike. Yeah. yeah. I've never skied there either. I really want to go. Our friend and photographer, Chris, he was a Burke, a Burke fan for a while. and He loves it. Yeah. Every time I've heard him talk about it, he loves it. Yeah. So. Cool mountain, fall line, interesting stuff. Yeah. Kind of, but like you said, it's like on its own. It's not like part of a range. No. It's really no, it interesting just sticks area. Up. Um, so good luck to Burke. Uh, topic number two here, we got some FIS news, mostly based on digital media, not so much actual racing. Um, Matt, I don't know if you watch Top 5 Fridays, but I lament often that I'm not able to just watch skiing on TV. I've noticed that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so FIS is trying to do something about that. This is an article from sportsvideo.org basically outlining uh, FIS's kind of move forward with their digital media. A uh, couple of things going on here is the addition of FIS TV. Uh, this app or website is basically covering all the disciplines like Alpine, cross country, freestyle, telemark, para, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. Um, what they don't have is what I'm looking for, which is live stream. I just want to be able to like pull the thing up on my phone or stream it to my TV and watch a ski race from beginning to end. Yeah. Like, I don't know why that's so difficult. Uh, and probably a big reason why it's not terribly popular here in America. Yeah. And I've been noticing a similar thing watching a lot of the soccer lately. I don't know if you've been watching Copa America or Euro, but they're actually doing a good job, but it's on Fox, but there's not a whole lot of other opportunities. Mm. So I'm hopeful that FIS TV will move towards that live stream and full event. It seems like right now you can get replays and highlights. Yeah, and... They were saying in that article that they're trying to model it after the F1, Formula One model. Yeah. Because I have F1 TV, and I watch it religiously every weekend. Yeah. And it's a great way to do it. If that's the model that they're going after, it's great because you can watch it live. Or you can, if you're not able to watch it live, you can watch the full replay of it whenever you want. Yeah. Um, and it just makes it super accessible. And then to make it more popular in the United States in the article they want to do something like a drive to survive Netflix series like what they did with Formula One yeah and we know that that ex exploded the sport like just blew it up in America and I mean I definitely think that people would gravitate towards that the the sport in general if there was a really high level documentary style show that came out every year because it's wickedly interesting. And like the whole backstory, the struggle, the injuries, yeah. how coming back from that, like people get attached to that. So I think it would be it would be huge if they could get some sort of traction with that style of you know. Yeah. Television. They need, they not only need to cater to like an ardent ski fan or F1 fan as your example, but they also need to like reach that the casual fan that may or may not be interested. You know like right. I kind of watched I don't know, half of Drive to Survive season one, and I really enjoyed the show. It, I don't have enough time to get fully in, involved in it, but right. I certainly know a lot more about it now than I did before I started watching. So like, I yeah. feel like I'm a good example of someone who knows something about racing but never fully got into it. Yeah. I think this, that, that what you're talking about will help 
those people. Mm -hmm. And just kind of bringing the, the large range of ski, skiers, I would say, and put them into a better viewing standpoint. For sure. So. And I think it would help attendance too at the races. Yeah. Because like that's a big thing in Formula One now is like they sell out. Like there's more than 300,000 people that show up to these things in a single weekend. Yeah. And that's like it's always been like that, but even more so now. And that would just help these resorts that are hosting. Um, I think it would just help bring up the industry yeah. as a whole. So uh, another thing they're doing is promoting athlete generated content. And this kind of goes hand in hand with what you're talking about where it's more like they're promoting more firsthand accounts or you know point of view accounts from the athletes from the racers and we've we had I think we had the edit of who is that French lady that won the Freeride World Tour oh um, uh Hedvig Vessel yeah so like yeah. that type of content uh where it's where it's like her kind of live reaction to what's going on at the at the event yeah so i think something like that would be really cool it gives kind of that first-hand account behind the scenes it's not like you can live stream your world cup giant slalom race like from a with a gopro on your helmet but, yeah you know there i think stuff like that is on the table so it doesn't take much it doesn't just take give much. certain yeah. athletes a gopro for a weekend yeah and they just film like what they do or yeah. like their whole process until the race run and then after and then you can either just give the camera back and then the fis edits yeah. it or whatever like it's pretty it can be done pretty easily and didn't we um i don't know if we featured it on top five fridays but um michaela has like a repeated yeah video, like we've vlog talked about style that series, thing. yeah so like it, they're doing it they just yeah. need more of it yeah no i mean it's uh, you know there's in my opinion, there's nowhere to go but up. Yeah. Because right, right now I'm not watching anything. Yeah. So, like, they need to figure out a way to put something in front of my face that they need to just shove it in our faces. Yeah, right. I think, instead of making you really hunt for it, because there's nothing I detest more than having to download multiple apps to maybe watch something that's not even in entirety. So frustrating. So. Good luck to FIS and their digital media ongoing battle. I do know that like licensing agreements and stuff like that are just a pain. But. Yeah. On to topic three here, kind of a piggyback. Um, this article from powder.com is talking about how pro skiers, or rather skiers, have more control over their emergence into content creation, specifically on YouTube. Um, they focus on athletes Alex Hackel and Nikolai Skirmer as good examples of YouTube content creators who are, are basically making a living and, and building their brand. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of room for people that want to control their own destiny on YouTube and other social media things, uh, which is different from kind of yesteryear uh, where you'd have to be on a film crew like level one or TGR, uh, and then your your persona is kind of controlled by by that governing body. Yeah. So I think that there's they're they're pointing out that there's more room for individuals to create themselves in a, a digital marketplace. Hundred percent. So. And I'm a big follower of Nikolai. I watch all of his videos. Yeah. I think he's hysterical and incredible skier. And this type of thing has really grown in popularity. Like, I, there's a bunch of mountain bikers that do it too. Totally. And I watch their stuff all the time. Yeah. And, like, I mean, it's like you said, you can do it all on your own. Like, just have a GoPro and just go and do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just go do your thing and then, like, put it out and people eat it up. People love watching that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, I don't. I don't do a lot of the video games where you like build your character and then like level up and stuff like that, but it's yeah. like Nikolai now gets a drone, you know, and then his videos get better and they get more views and you reach another level and then you get, you know, a crew and then you, you know, you just kind of are able to build your, build your persona, build your, your market, yeah. I think on your own and you don't have to rely on, on other people to do it for you. So I think that that's pretty cool. And from speaking for myself and a bunch of my friends personally, like we, you, we watch, like if we're going to be watching content, yeah, the majority is on YouTube, like not right. Netflix or any of those other things. Like we just watch YouTube because there's, 
high level production stuff for free on there. Yeah. So like you can, there's a lot to be watched there and no limitations really. Right. So. And you don't even, you, you don't have to be a, a high end athlete like these gentlemen or anyone to no. to make good content. You just kind of have to have your own thing that speaks to somebody out there and you're going to, you can take it out however far you want to take it. Yep. So I think that's pretty cool. Yep. Any other thoughts on that one? I just think that YouTube is kind of the, the future of, you know, um, this type of entertainment. Yeah. I think that that's kind of the next frontier, I guess. Like so individualized think, entertainment. Right. Totally. Yeah, I think that that's just going to be the most accessible for people, and that's where the most amount of views are going to be. I mean, you could search anything on YouTube and a video will show up. Yeah. You can't do that at any other place, really. No, nope, you're right about that. So, yeah. Yeah. Four, Shred, sh shred Shocks. Did you look this up? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an article from Vail Daily. This, I... This has April Fool's Day vibes written all over it, <laughs> yeah. Matt. Uh, this is a new product called Shred Shocks. That is a difficult name to say. Um, it's a binding suspen suspension system. There's a carbon plate that your binding is mounted to, and then that plate is mounted to two shocks that look like rear shocks from a mountain bike to me. Yeah. The, the shocks are supposed to smooth everything out as they do in your bike system. This is a technology that's developed from auto racing. Yeah. This was invented in Indianapolis, and it looks like it's going to find its way to skis, Matt. Eventually. Yeah. It, it looks very strange. Like, they stick up about that far, and your bindings on a plate are about... That far off of your skis? I, I looked at it. It looks like a five centimeter stack. Yeah. Which is a lot. Yeah, it's pretty far from. I mean, we can, we can, everyone's going to want to poke holes in this. Yeah. Let me think about some positives here. Of course. Um, the, the concept is sound in terms of looking for a damp ride. If you're looking for smoothness and dampness, sure, adding suspension is the way to go. I think that the benefits are going to be in softer and cruddier snow. And to be fair, I've talked about hover skis for a long time. We joked about our friend Emily that we skied with over the past few years. Any still photo that we have of Emily, her skis are about this far off the snow. So it doesn't look like she ever touches the snow. Yep. It looks like she's on hover skis. So when we're thinking about getting wider and wider skis to increase flotation, I just feel like the eventual technological culmination is going to be hover skis. Yeah. So <laughs> this is, I think this is a step in that direction. I think so too. Yeah. Um, crud, chop, anything where you're, you're going to be hitting a, a, a firmer surface underneath. Yeah. That's, that's where I see the benefit here. I wrote down the quote from founder Ken Nichols. And I am going to poke a hole in this one. This is on their main page of their website. Okay. What if downhill ski racing had the same suspension and damping technology as motorsports? And I just couldn't help but think that downhill ski racing is the opposite of what you're looking for. Yeah. Because you're never going to be able to get the same type of transfer of energy to the edge, to the ice as you will on a direct mounted plate to metal fill skis that go right to the snow. Agreed. So I'm having a hard time with that one. If they put the if they put these on a downhill ski, like a 223 or whatever they're racing with, and you're jacked this far up off the ski, like I just don't see how that's a benefit. No. I think it would look like one of those downhill dummy Things that they do in the, the spring. Downhill big air, the yeah. dummy big airs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I also am a big fan of progress, and I like it when people try new things. Of course. So I'm not going to poo-poo this thing from top to bottom at all. I like it when new things come, out, come around. I'm in the same boat. I, it's, 
it's going to take a little bit <laughs> for them to, to get this design figured out. Um, yeah, like, as you said, like, the transfer of power thing is going to have to get figured out. And also, like, I just, having something stick out pretty far from right there, like, if your skis come off, yeah, those are just ready to hit you. Yeah, they're going to get Or you. someone else. Yeah. Like, th that needs to kind of get, like, that needs to get ironed out. But the, the principle and philosophy is great. I love the idea. Yeah. Like, just decreasing the undulations and just making it nice and smooth. Love that. But, yeah. you know. It's a, it's a move towards hover skis, and yeah. I, I'm into it. Um, What's the name of your hover skis going to be called? Guess. Hover skis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as always, we have, since we have not skied on Shred Shock's system, I am not going to say that it's bad. No, I wouldn't. Got to experience it before you form any type of judgment. I really want to try them. Me too. I really do. Hopefully, that'll be a year goal for us, Matt. Yep. Um, yeah, not an April Fool's joke. Shred shocks. Edits of the week, Matt. Number one, Phil Casabon. It's an Armada edit. Three and a half minutes of all Phil. I had to look really hard to find ski poles in this video. <laughs> yeah. I saw one pair. <laughs> one pair. <laughs> so one pair of ski poles, but I had to look hard for it. So just progressive park in rail skiing, super creative from Phil. Yeah, I always think if Phil is one of those skiers where you could be at the top of the hill looking down at the park and he, or like you see a skier just thrown down, he's one of those people that his style, you could be like, that's yeah. Phil. Him and Henrik, you can be like, yeah, that's yeah. that's one of those two. Yep, so very specific. Very unique. Yep. Uh, number two, uh, Breathe from Scott Gaffney. Matt, you were not alive when this film was released. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you were probably like negative three. When were you born? 98. Yeah, okay, so not too far. Nin 1997, this is, my, this is my heyday. Yep. So if you want a, a glimpse into what my ideal of skiing was when I was a formative teenage skier, this film does it. I mean, it still holds up. Yeah. It's rad. Um, I did notice too, and sadly, that there's a lot of dead people mm -hmm. now in this video. So uh, I think that's something you experience when you get older. I'm not saying I'm old, but um, you definitely realize that some of your heroes growing up, especially with a group like this that was really pushing the boundaries, is now uh, they've now passed on, which is really sad. Mm -hmm. But this is a full film, 53 minutes. If you're interested in seeing what I wanted to be as a skier when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. That was it. That's it. Johnny Mosley, straight air, 1080s with a mute grab at the end. Unbelievable. Sick. Unbelievable. Uh, number three, this is kind of like opposite um, urban skiing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan Desenzo, uh, backcountry skateboarding in British Columbia. So take what you know about... Uh, uh, urban skiing, bringing snow in to a non-snow environment and skiing that, flip it. They're bringing plywood and using backcountry features for skateboarding with actual wheels on it. It's not snowboarding, this is skateboarding in the backcountry with snow. Very interesting and creative stuff from our friends at Red Bull. Love just, the irony. <laughs> just keep pushing, keep pushing the limits. <laughs> So, very interesting. Uh, you can watch this and say, I've never seen anything like that. Yep. And uh, if you can make a short film and have someone say that about it, I think that that's a success. Yep. Why is Red Bull so good at doing stuff like that? I, Just doing something that you never would have been like. Well, they drink their Red Bull and then they stay up all night and they get delirious and they have these strange ideas. I get it now. So, I think yeah. it's sleep deprivation that causes causes these concepts. Okay. Um, but yeah, those are our three edits. Those are, are our topics of the week. Um, please make sure to look into our warehouse sale once again. Uh, hope to see you next weekend if you're in the area. Uh, if you're a little farther, I do think some of these deals are worth the drive. Yep. We got it all. I mean, imagine Jeff or Bob selling you a pair of skis in person. Yeah. That's or Matt. 
<laughs> or me. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So it should be fun. It's always crazy. There's a lot of people here just, you know, it's like one of those Black Friday videos that you see of people just ripping stuff off the shelves. I mean, last year they were, they were all, there was a whole line yeah. down the street at yeah. 6.30, 7 a.m. It was early. It was wild. <laughs> yeah. I'm just excited for the ice cream. Yeah. Ice cream too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's Top 5 Fridays for this week. Matt, thank you for filling in for Jeff. Thank you for having uh, me. Yep, yeah, and we hope to see you uh, next weekend at the warehouse sale or at Top 5 Fridays video. Have a good week. Bye.